You're listening to the Raising Black Millionaire Show with your host, Tia Viona Muhammad, your source for tips, strategies, and resources on how to raise your black child to be a millionaire. Let's talk. Today we have on the show the founder and CEO of Credit Healing LLC and the author of the highly revered ebook, The Keys to Credit Building, Credit Repair Blueprint Revealed. Mr. Orel Muhammad. Now, Mr. Muhammad has worked with many of today's successful businessmen and women who at one time struggled with less than desirable credit and are now managing flourishing businesses that they were able to either get started or turn around by leveraging credit after receiving Mr. Muhammad's services. Today, we're excited. Excited to talk with him about some of the fun to, fundamentals people need to know about credit and ways we can raise our children with the knowledge to begin life with exceptional credit that they may use to carve out successful and enjoyable lifestyles. With that, I'd like to welcome to the show Aurel Muhammad. Welcome, sir. Thank you, Miss Tia. How are you doing today? I'm very good. Thank you. How are you? I'm doing excellent. I'm, you know, I'm always just trying to be better every day. So praise God that that I'm able to wake up to be blessed to see another day. Listen, one thing I didn't share in your introduction was that uh, you are a world traveler because I keep seeing all kinds of Facebook posts of you in this country and that country and just know that my husband and I, we talk about you. So when your ears start tinkling and stuff, that's us. That's us talking about you traveling the world, brother. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yeah, um, well, just in terms of me um, being a world traveler, it's something that's very recent. It's something that I've been wanting to to do um, really? for, for a few years. But just to kind of tie that in with the subject, in terms mm-hmm. of me, Um, traveling abroad, you can actually use credit to leverage um, your ability to be able to travel and use flight mileage and be able to get credit cards to be able to travel without having to pay out of pocket because you get bonus mileage. So so as you know, there are many different ways that, that we can actually use credit to be able to benefit ourselves, to be able to not only get the things what we want, but get the things that we need in life. So I just think that's very important for, for us to be able to know and understand credit, how it works, and how we can use it to benefit ourselves, which I'm sure that we'll get into later on in this uh, particular call. You, you know your sister. We most certainly will, absolutely. So, yes, sir, yeah. thank you for, for just diving in with that. I sure enough appreciate that. So yes, now ma'am. if you can get us started by giving the people a little bit about your background and more insight about who you are. Can you do that for us, please? Absolutely. Well, I generally, um, to be honest, I generally don't necessarily like to talk about myself because, you know, I always try to just remain humble. And, uh, mm-hmm. But I will, do that for, I will do this for this show because um, my, okay. my thing is that I, I love to help people. So, but yeah. I'll, I'll definitely do that for you, um, and I thank you for having thank me on you, today. Yes, but with me, um, so I'll start off with uh, prior to uh, my getting married um, in 2014. So before I got married um, to my wife, Christina Muhammad, I had fairly decent credit. Mm-hmm. Um, but when we got married, so prior to um, my getting married to her, I was working on a job as a designer drafter. And so I basically okay. create blueprints. Um, I do that as well. Mm-hmm. But in terms of um, prior to my getting married, my wife, um, when she moved down from Delaware to Louisiana. Mm-hmm. So maybe like a month or so before then, I was laid off from my job. So just imagine being, you know, 24 years of age, Mm-hmm. You're living in Louisiana, and your wife lives in Delaware, and you get laid off from your job approximately three weeks before you get married. Mm-hmm. So I had, you know, very turbulent times during that time period. But when she moved down um, with me, I, didn't, I was actually unemployed. 
Okay. So when that happened, and I was unemployed because basically they had like a lot of layoffs, so on and so forth. Just you know, many jobs do around America yeah. today. Yeah. And so um, my credit actually plummeted. It went mm. very, very low, and I was very stressed out because at, a, at that particular time, I was building up my credit to be able to um, purchase a home, you know, once I got married. Got it. Mm-hmm. And so I was building up my credit, and then when we got when, when, when we were married, um, it plummeted. And so uh, I was just stressed out, and you know, I was like, you know, my, my credit score, it wasn't as high as it is today, but it was it was pretty decent because I always – was responsible. I always made sure to pay my bills on time. You know, didn't have a lot of debt, so on and so forth. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So with um, so when that happened, I was like, you know, I need to find a way to rebuild my credit really, really fast. And I, but I don't, I don't really know, you know, how to do it. So mm-hmm. I began just doing research. And so um, what I did was that I found out a way that I can actually dispute. Uh, and get things removed um, just just by sending the credit bureau's letters. And right. so I, I went ahead and I was like, okay, well, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and give this a try. You know, I'm going to do my best at it, and I'm going to stay on them until I can get this, I can get these things removed. So, and you had the time because you weren't working, right? No, so this was, um, this was approximately, I would say, maybe two years later. So this is maybe like in okay. uh, 2000. Oh, two, late 2015 or 2016 or so. Um, Got it. But, yeah, but I was working during this time. Mm-hmm. So I said to mm-hmm. myself, man, like, I, I really want to um, repair my credit and get my credit back up to where it was because it was very, very low. Mm-hmm. So I disputed, and I got all these um, derogatory items removed. And so my credit jumped from, like, it went from approximately, I would probably say, like, 580 or so to around mm-hmm. 765 within like okay. a few months. Got it. So I said to myself, okay, I know that there are a lot of people who are who are going through the same things that I went through in life in terms of layoffs, um, you know, having debt, you know, medical bills, et cetera. Yeah. And so I said to myself, what I want to do is I want to be able to help people. You know, because mm-hmm. I said because I was able to, to do this and now I said as though that I can offer this um, to other people, and so when I started, I, I basically started off and I was I was just offering it for free. I was just you know saying, hey, look, man, like you can do this, you know, like you know, just 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 follow my steps. You can do this, you know, it won't be a problem, etc. Mm-hmm. But what's interesting mm-hmm. about that is mm-hmm. when I first started my business, um, and I was offering it. Well, actually, I didn't start my business at the time. But but when I began offering it, um, a lot of people for, when I was offering for free, a lot of people they weren't actually um, taking heed to it because I guess that when something is free, it's free people yeah. they don't Undervalue. have a tendency to yeah they, they don't really value it, they don't really take it serious. So I'm mm-hmm. like you know why like I'm offering this to people and they're not even like <laughs> they're not even using it. So mm-hmm. I did what I said okay well what I'm going to do is that. I'm going to make this into a business because I love helping people. That's just one thing about me. I love helping people. And, I, and, and so I was looking at all the prices that a lot of these credit repair companies were charging, and I'm like, this is just outrageous. You know, I'm like, this is outrageous for people to charge this much to people who are already in debt. Mm-hmm. People are already in thousands of dollars in debt, and yet you're charging them Eight hundred, nine hundred thousand dollars or more to fix their credit when they're trying to get out of debt, mm-hmm. but it doesn't make any sense. Mm-hmm. So when I began doing it, I off, I started offering as a do-it-yourself program, and so I was showing, so I show people step by step on how they can repair their own credit. It's very easy and it's very simple, and I also offer it to people um, who want need to be able to do it for them. So for okay. those who you know who want need to repair their credit for them. I can do that. It's very, very low charge. Um, I've helped thousands upon thousands of people, and, you know, I definitely love to help more and more, more people because this is something that people need to do because credit is very, very important in America, very mm-hmm. important. Mm-hmm. 
Well, good. Thank you so much for giving us that because um, I think that it's important for for the listeners to really be able to connect with the fact that in many cases, really just like with uh, most of today's uber successful people, they started off in a a, a, a dire situation or at least yes, nowhere near Absolutely. where their success today is, right? And so Absolutely. I think it's really important uh, to be able to connect folks with the tangibility of the goal of having really optimum credit, right, where they right. could literally yeah. just kind of command the world um, based upon, you know, their their credit situation. So, you know, the interesting thing to me is that so many of us grow up knowing absolutely nothing about credit in terms of, you know, what it is, how it works, what the proper ways are to go about establishing it and using it or maintaining it. And, you know, as a matter of fact, I can remember being about 17 years old, and I was just about to go away to college. And my aunt told me, she said, Pumpkin, whatever you do, don't get any student loans and don't get any credit cards because both <laughs> will jack up your credit and it's hard to fix it, right? And that was it. Like, that was all she told yeah. me, right? And yeah, so you're right. I, <laughs> and so I you're was, right. you know, I was the kind of person who, if someone I trusted gave me any cautionary advice about any particular matter, I just avoid it altogether versus right. taking the time to learn why they issued the right. caution and why and the ways right. to get around the pitfalls to find any good of, or use of it at all, right? And. Right. I think such a significant number of our people just avoid credit altogether and then tend right. to build these lives where they they may fare well or not and completely mm-hmm. they do it completely void of credit, whereas right. Right. they may have been able to reach goals more quickly or in a greater scale, on a greater scale, if only mm-hmm. they had had the knowledge of how to properly use credit to do so. Can you right. tell us what you find is the biggest misconception or flawed way of thought regarding credit when dealing with clients? Yes, ma'am. Well, uh, I want to actually kind of um, go back for, for a quick second. Sure, uh, please. On something that you mentioned earlier regarding um, credit cards. And, yeah, th- mm-hmm. there was definitely a time where, um, especially, you know, when credit cards first began to be really popular, um, mm-hmm. that was like, you know, something that a lot of people were saying, like avoid credit cards at all costs. Um, mm-hmm. and, in many, and there is some truth to that. There is some truth, but it's not necessarily um, completely true. Um, mm-hmm. Because the thing about credit cards is that, well, they used to charge uh, like very high fees, et cetera. Um, but the mm-hmm. thing about credit cards nowadays is that um, usually, you know, you'll pay like an annual fee. It's, you know, usually low. Um, Mm -hmm. but as long as you make your payment on time, Mm -hmm. then you wouldn't have to worry about, um, you know, being in debt and and paying high interest rates because as as long as you make that 30 day payment in full, you won't have to make, Mm -hmm. you won't have to pay any interest on your Mm -hmm. credit card. So it's basically like you're using other people's money to be able to leverage and, and do things that you need to do, such as pay bills, you know, buy groceries, et cetera. But, when we make our purchases, we have to make our purchases with the thought in mind that we already have that money in the bank because mm-hmm. you don't necessarily want to spend other people's money without actually having access to your money to be able to pay it on time. And right. credit is simply to just make payments on time over time. That's just really the definition of credit is right. to make payments on time over time. And so that's how you credit. And so um, in terms of credit cards, yeah, credit cards can definitely be beneficial, especially if there are a lot of bonuses and perks, um, gas, gas bonuses and gas. Like there's a lot of things that are good about credit cards. A lot of people think that credit cards are, are not good, so they don't actually get any credit cards ever. 
Mm-hmm. I know mm-hmm. I know some people who are 50, 60 years old who's never you purchased any, who never got never any credit cards before. Mm-hmm. But that's one way that you can actually build your credit, especially mm-hmm. um, if you open it up when you're young, such as like, you know, when you're 18, 19 years old. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's why it's very, very important to um, teach um, fiscal responsibility to our yeah. children because – when they are when they go to college and they're introduced to the world, they're gonna be they're gonna be bombarded with credit card deals and, and offers and and so they may think, Oh man, like, you know, this is money so on and so forth but that's how a lot of people get themselves into debt because they don't have the knowledge. Mm-hmm. So it's very important to sit down with our children and educate them on credit, how it works, even if it's the, the basics. There are YouTube videos that people can watch, you know, just basically dealing with credit. So, you know, the information is basically limitless. You know, there's all kind of resources that we can use. But to answer your question um, in regards to, uh, you know, people, a lot of people, they may not truly understand about credit is that they don't think that credit is king. Credit is king in America. America runs off of credit. So that's pretty because America, the trillions of dollars in debt, but they use credit to be able to leverage themselves to be able to pay off many of the they owe to the bankers, the, the international bankers, which is a totally different subject in and of itself. But, mm-hmm. um, and this is how many of your millionaires and billionaires become richer. Yeah. All by day. using credit. I'm telling you. They don't use their own money. They use other people's money to be able to invest in real estate, to be able to invest in their own businesses, et cetera. So once we have once we can increase our credit scores and we can prove to lenders that we are worthy of having credit, then we can go and we can use other people's money to be able to leverage ourselves and our businesses so we can be able to um, reach higher goals in life. So yeah. everything is run off of credit, and the wise know this. This is yeah. why we aren't being taught about credit in school, because mm-hmm. we have to know and understand. And I don't want to go over many people's head, um, you know, in your audience, but this is something that I feel as though I must say. Yeah, please. We have to know and understand that um, the rich does not necessarily want for the poor to be um, to be as knowledgeable as they are yeah. in various fields of life, because how could how can they stay on the top if we have the same knowledge as they do that they have. and information mm-hmm. that they do? So they keep certain things such as credit, owning their own businesses, real estate. Mm-hmm. They don't teach that in school, although they can. They can put that in certain certain curriculums. But that's why we should learn about these things because they're not being taught to us in school. We should we should start learning about credit and finances really when we're in elementary school, Absolutely. middle school, because this is going to be every that's that's our everyday life. That's how everything is run is run off of credit. So why should not we be educated about these things? So that's just a few, that's just a few things. There are many other things which I'm sure that we'll go um, more in detail in later on. Um, during this this session, but uh, but yeah, those those are a few things that we should definitely know about credit. Yeah, and and I'm glad that you went there because you know that's the reason why programs and um, books and they're really developed into a whole series, the, like the Rich Dad Poor Dad series. Right. Yes, ma'am. That's why that they're so people. successful. Um, mm-hmm. Because you know he took that one book. It started with the gain. It, a lot of right. people don't realize it that it started with the cash flow, the the cash flow game, which is a brilliant game. I've our listeners uh, by now should be really, really uh, uh, used to hearing us talk about it uh, right. because it's definitely a game that should be played regularly with our families. But um, it started with that game, and then it it went into the Rich Dad, Poor Dad book, and from that right. one book, they developed a whole series that right. was 
based upon the premise that the poor don't know uh, all the things that the wealthy know, and this right. is an avenue to teach it to them so that they can acquire, build, and, acquire, and maintain their own wealth. And so and, and right. essentially that's the point of the Raising Black Millionaires brand as well. You know, it, the goal is to be able to, to really empower our children with this information and then immediate utilization of this information early Absolutely. on so that yeah. it becomes habits of norm for them. It won't be, it will no longer be a matter that is taboo. It will no longer be a concept that uh, escapes them a whole nother additional generation from from where a lot of us parents are, right? And so Absolutely. what do you think are some core concepts we should be teaching our children about credit before they even go away to school or leave our home? Yes, ma'am. Well, I think that one thing that we should definitely teach them, um, first and foremost, is don't spend money that you don't have. Mm. Um, and so that can that can go, you know, along with credit, but that can just also go along with, um, you know, with them having an everyday job, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So if we look at it like this, um, so say, for instance, if, you know, your son or daughter is working a nine-to-five job at, you know, a fast food restaurant, or, you know, a restaurant or a clothing store, et cetera. And they are constantly spending money that they don't necessarily have. Now, they may have it, but they don't necessarily have the income to be able to support themselves if they were to not have that job anymore. Mm-hmm. So one thing that we should instill in our children's mind is to save your money don't get things that, yeah, we, we should all treat ourselves. I'm not saying that, that we should not treat ourselves with things here and there. But because, you know, we, we live in a very materialistic society, you know, we have the tendency to want to get everything new. You know, the new iPhone, you know, the new, you know, the new PlayStation games, the new shoes, clothes, et cetera. And then they're 18 years old, you know, working at these jobs, and by the time they're 22, 24, they still don't have any money in the bank. Yes. They still don't have um, any finances to, to be able to, uh, you know, make their investment. Because I think that around when we're around maybe 24, 25, we should start looking at making investments, whether it's small investments, investment in stock, um, you know, if it's in, in anything, investing in ourselves, investing in our businesses, et cetera. I think we should start a little earlier, but I'm speaking in terms of us being on our own and, and, and doing these things, you know, as, as, as adults, you know, going throughout society, um, you know, living uh, alone. But yeah. one thing that I think that is very, very important for us to, to know and, and understand and also teach our children is don't go out and spend, spend all your money. Yeah. But don't just tell them that, but teach them how they can make better choices with their money. Because, you know, think about it. If your son or daughter is making $30,000 a year, right, mm-hmm. uh, at 18 years of age, you know, or if it's, you know, let's say, let's say $20,000. let us say $20,000 a year. Mm-hmm. If we teach them properly, by the end of that fiscal year, They'll be able to have. They'll be able to pocket ten thousand dollars and have ten thousand dollars saved up in their bank. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Four years later, I'm pretty sure they'll. You know, they'll probably get a few raises. Four years mm-hmm. later, by the time they're 22, they'll have forty thousand dollars in the bank mm-hmm. that they can start making their investments. Mm-hmm. So, it's very, very important, just as a as core principles, to teach our children. And along with this, I'm going to, along with this, I'm going to couple this with credit. So there, you know, so you can teach them about credit cards, the basic credit card. So by the time they get 24 years of age, 22, 24 years of age, then they'll have an over 700 credit score because yeah. it's not that hard to get. It's only, yeah. it can be more difficult if, if you have, if you hurt your credit and you owe these things and you don't necessarily know how to get them removed. 
But if you, but yeah. if you're being taught how to get them removed, then, it, then it's very easy to to increase and improve your credit score. But it's easy to be um, 24 years of age with over a 700 credit score. Then they'll have forty thousand dollars in the bank that they can use yeah. to make investments. Go invest in real estate. You know, you only have to put down you know around three percent. You know, yeah. three to five, three yeah. to seven percent. So. Yeah. These are core principles that are very, very easy to do, easy to obtain, but it's just about having the information, having the knowledge, and have someone to be able to guide them and teach them, teach them these things so they can be twice, three times, ten times as successful as we were when, they, when we were their okay. age. Absolutely. That's really what it's about. It, it, we really, it's really all that it's about. You know, it, and it, it really boils down to discipline and proper Absolutely. money management habits. Absolutely. You know, I can remember talking with Keith Weish uh, when we had, when we interviewed Keith Weish, who is now vice president and regional general manager of Walmart. And during our uh-huh. interview, he told me that he and his siblings were not taught to irresponsibly use credit. They saw their parents buying only what they could actually pay for when they use their credit cards, like you were just saying. Uh, And uh, additionally, I remember listening to something my very first business coach said about credit habits of the wealthy and how wealthy people use credit. Just like you were saying, they use credit uh, when using cash may cost them more or or something to that effect. And, you know, and, and that they pay uh, the borrowed money back before that 30-day reporting cycle is up to prevent having right. to pay that interest on those funds. So right. I, I, I'm glad that you you brought that up. Um, one yeah. thing I can remember is encountering peers in, in, like, late high school or early college who would have these expensive cars or even some of them actually had begun in real estate that – and that um, I, we discovered back then that they'd gotten from their own credit use that had been built by their parents. And I later mm-hmm. found out about what we used to call piggybacking and later understood uh, to be AUs or authorized users. Can you right. explain what that is to the audience and what you think is the best way for parents to use this uh, and any other method you may have to build up their children's credit prior to adulthood, like you were just talking about. Yes, ma'am. Um, thank you for that question. So an authorized mm-hmm. user is basically when a person uh, generally, when a person has good credit, they put someone who has either no credit or bad credit on their account. So basically the information mm-hmm. on their credit report reflects on the other person's credit report who they have made as as an authorized user. And mm-hmm. so that can help establish credit, especially when the person who is using the other person's um, credit information, uh, it can basically help them to be able to uh, leverage their finances and their credit so they can be able to make investments. Now, once an authorized user is um, is removed from from the account, the credit score goes back to where it was prior, but the payments that the person made still remain. And also, if the person wants to make investments, such as like in real estate, um, you know, so on and so forth, they can use um, the account as an authorized user to be able to make uh, to, to be able to make these investments. So it actually reflects as though that the account is theirs. So mm-hmm. it's not like that it shows up as, you know, two separate accounts. It's actually, it appears as though there's one account. So when they pull up your credit report, everything that's reflected on, say, for instance, the person's parents or grandparents, um, credit is reflected on theirs as well. And they don't look at all the, you know, all the intricate details, et cetera. They may, you know, they may look to see if, if a bankruptcy is there or tax lien, et cetera. But they're not going to look at all the intricate detail, and all they want to see is good credit being reported. So, um uh, Yes, I, I would definitely suggest that, you know, if a person, a young person does not have um, credit to, you know, ask someone, you know, ask your, your parents or grandparents or aunties, uncles, et cetera, you know, hey, can, can you make me as, as an authorized user? 
um, you know, I would like to, to establish and, and build my credit so I can give it to make investments in the future. And, you know, most people will say, well, you know, first they'll, they'll see if, you know, if you're responsible, et cetera. Um, but, but, you know, usually from what I understand, usually there's someone in, in a family who will actually allow the person to, um, to become an authorized user because they love you. They, they care about you and they want to see you be successful. So never be afraid. I get um, clients, they ask me about that all the time. Um, you know, I, I know people who have uh, grandparents, um, you know, they are, have, you know, A1 credit, and so they became authorized user. Um, and so now you know, they're trying to, uh, you know, make investments to be able to do things that they need in life. I get a lot of people, um, you know, who, uh, you know, they ask me all, all kinds of all, kind of questions but author but being an authorized user is definitely one of them um yeah but yes you definitely want to establish yourself um any way possible and being an authorized user is definitely one of them well i, th- I think one of the things and, and thank you for for explaining that I, I think one of the things that um was even awesome uh when i considered when the very first time i allow someone to be an authorized user on one of my accounts, um, the, the one thing that really struck me uh, was the fact that I didn't even really have to worry about this person getting on my account and mishandling my account because I didn't have to give them the credit card. I could right. literally just put them on as an authorized user, have the credit card mailed to me, and just mm-hmm. simply – sit the card somewhere or cut the card up if I wanted to right. just for Absolutely. them. You know, the, the goal was just simply to use my credit uh, history with that particular uh, creditor to improve right. their, you know, their, their score. And then I think that uh, I, I would love for, to point out this fact too, to go off of what you're saying, um, because I think a lot of people who may be listening to this, may not have good credit, may not even know anyone with good credit, but they may know somebody who has kept a good rapport with Macy, you know, or they right. may just have maybe that finger hut account that they've right. always managed to keep in good standing. Uh, right. So the rest of their credit may be jacked up, but mm-hmm. that account with that one creditor may be great. They may be paying that on time for, you know, for a number of years, and that account, that one account, can still be used for that very same sake of them being right. uh, allowing somebody to be an authorized user on that account, where right. it they'll still be able to benefit in that same way because it's just it's just that one account that'll be reflecting on the the other person's credit. Is that right? Correct. Yes, ma'am. That's absolutely Perfect. correct. Perfect. You know. Um, Recently on Facebook, there was a post going around. Now, I'm not sure who started the post, but it it read like this. It said, Mm -hmm. create an LLC for your kids when they're in high school. File taxes Mm -hmm. on it for four years. Start business history. Pay them on the business payroll checks. Set their salary. Get a business credit card. Make them an authorized signer. Establish business credit, and that's the graduation gift. Let's break the cycle. Now, I know many people may have seen that post, and I'd like for you to offer your professional opinion about that as an effective course of action. I know some of those points you've touched on already, but if you could just kind of give your professional thoughts about that. Absolutely. Well, I think that that's actually um, a, a perfect and great goal um, that that you will have because you know as I said earlier, you know you can you can start teaching credit investments um in business you know at a very young age you know you can actually start a lot younger than um than eighteen years of age, which in some states it differs, but mm-hmm. when they become an adult, it's very very um I would say it's very important because you have to realize that. Long after you're gone, your children are still going to be here. So why not educate them as much as possible? Why not start them off on a different foot than than we started off on? 
And so when we think about, you know, our future, we have to think about, okay, well, what is the most effective way that I can make sure that I, that my children have a bright future? It's not always, you know, being educated by getting a degree at a university, which is, that could be good. But many of your million and billionaires don't even have a college degree. Yeah, They've never true. been in debt by going to a university and, yeah. you know, and being educated that way. So we, yeah. we, have to, we have to kind of, I would say, get away from what's, quote, unquote, the standard of American society, which is, you know, go to school, which is educated is, is great. We should all be educated. But we should not necessarily teach education or, or let's say getting a degree we shouldn't teach that more than entrepreneurship because yeah. the rich actually teach their children entrepreneurship <laughs> they start teaching them at a young age and as you said earlier yeah. with rich dad poor poor dad you know we can start teaching them at a young age and and monopoly was was one of the ways that uh that uh that kiyosaki robert kiyosaki started you know to to learn about finances yeah yeah, but in terms of um, making, you know, starting off getting them an LLC is very, very cheap. It's probably what less than a hundred dollars or so is is very yeah, cheap right um, to uh, to do that. And I want to add this as well. Please. Another way that we can actually teach our children about entrepreneurship and it's a very, very uh, is very, very cheap and does not cost a lot. But we can teach them um, how to become entrepreneurs by them um, getting their notary license. Hmm. So they can become their own notary public. If you are in Delaware, it's, it's, very, it's very inexpensive um, to get your notary. It's like over – and you don't even have to take a test in Delaware. And I, I think also in Virginia. Mm-hmm. But it's, it's like under $200, like under – well, actually, to get your license is only like $100. But to get, like, the additional things such as the book and your stamp is, like, maybe, like, um, $80 more or so. Mm-hmm. So, like, for around $180, um, your child can actually get their notary license. Um, you can, you know, start them a business, get them an LLC, and then uh, teach them and have them be educated on how to notarize documents. You don't necessarily have to teach them because in many states such as Louisiana, Georgia, you have to take a test to become yeah. um, a, a, a legal notary. Yeah. You don't have to necessarily go to law school, although many lawyers, once they get their law degree, they automatically uh, become, they can automatically notary. become a notary public. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. you can actually take a test, become a, uh, notary, become a notary public, you know, but you have to get your LLC first usually, and then, um, and then have them start from over. Like you can notarize documents anywhere from $10 to $200. Yeah, sure. It's very. Day. That's actually one of the the cheapest ways that a person can actually start a business in America, because there's really no no large investment. And, and if you're doing now, mobile notary, mm-hmm. ma'am. No, I'm sorry. I, I was just saying. And now with mobile notaries, it's ridiculous. But go ahead. I'm sorry. Do, yeah, yeah, exactly. And so mobile notaries, you know, people they like. I personally, I actually have my my own uh, notary license, so. I'm actually a, a notary public, and mm-hmm. so, and so I know that I know that this works because I do it myself. I do it with my business, um, and I'm also starting um, a new business in terms of, uh, you know, notarizing other documents as well. Mm-hmm. So I know that it works, and so we're dealing with no mobile notaries. They don't have to, you know, uh, own the building. You know, mm-hmm. they can work out of their home, or they can meet at you know, Starbucks or, you know, anywhere they want. Notarize documents, you know, invest in, in flyers. <clears throat> Excuse me, invest in flyers. Um, that doesn't cost a lot. You know, start putting them out at, at, at each gas station, you know, at different stores. Network with people. It could be done. It's, it's very simple and very easy. But now um, many of the companies, notary companies, are now going to online, not- online notary public. Yeah. So now you can actually notarize documents uh, legally in many states. I know that Virginia is being one of them. Delaware, it's, it's about, I'll probably say, 11 states that now move into being a, um, you know, online notary where they can actually uh, e-notarize documents. So now many people, 
you know, they can just sit at their own home and, you know, do some type of a web chat, whether it be Skype or whatever you would like to use. And, um, and then basically you can notarize documents while sitting at your own home, you know, while mm-hmm. talking to a person um, via chat. All you need to do is just see them sign a document and then put the, the electric uh, notary on there, and that's it. Yeah. Very easy. So, yeah there, yeah, there are many different ways that we can you know, that we can go about teaching our children entrepreneurship, which doesn't involve, um, you know, a lot of investments and in, in money and resources. It's all about acquiring information and then going out and doing it. Our future is very, very important, and, and we would want for our, our future to be uh, much better than than we were when we were younger, and it all much most times it, it really doesn't even require a lot of work. It just requires, it may require discipline, but not necessarily a lot of work starting off. Yeah. So yeah. um, but yeah, to go back to your point, yeah, definitely start start them off. Get them a credit card. Teach them um how to be fiscally responsible, um because that's gonna be very important. Get them an LLC when they're eighteen. Start them off with, with a small business, Notary Public, um, or whatever you would like to do, and then go from there. So, yeah, absolutely. Now, to, to wrap things up, I, I do want to make sure I ask you this question because you, you mentioned earlier how credit should be taught to children uh, as early as elementary school. So can you – Give the listeners an idea of what are some things to start off with teaching them about credit um, or if there are any particular videos. I think you mentioned a couple of videos earlier or any books um, that you recommend starting off with, whether it's the parents reading them or the children. Uh, And feel free, brother, to plug in uh, your book that's available on your website. Absolutely. So I would definitely say this, that we can teach our children um, how to be responsible dealing with certain things, even when it, it may not be necessarily money per se, although I, w- I would honestly say that my mother has always said that I've been, that since I was in elementary school, I've always been very good with money, um, like knowing how to save money, um, how to make investments, et cetera. She said, I've always had that ability to do um, post to, to my siblings. But I guess I don't know where it came from, but she, she has always told me that I've always been really good with money. Um, but in terms of, um, you know, allowances, you know, like have them work. Like when I was younger, um, mm-hmm. my grandmother, she's actually, when I was in elementary school, my grandmother, she used to actually um, have me and my brother go and work for her we should do like you know like things because she she my grandmother she's a real estate she does real estate and she also owns um uh is actually a, a home health business where she helps okay. the elderly i um, mean and, and sick people yeah. but it's called healing hand healing hands home health but she used to always have us come over as young young people and also we used to have friends of the family they used to um one friend of the family he used to actually uh bring me my brother over to his construction site and have us work mm. for him, you know, doing logging, like picking up logs and bringing it from one place to the other. And he used to pay us, you know, he used mm. to pay us money. So he used to teach me, my brother, uh, these, you know, the principles about being able to work for, work for what, you know, what you want to earn. And then my mother, she used to teach us about saving our money, you know, so we used to save our money. And so, I remember, like, How one time, you? I'll say this. I kept um, a $20 bill. In, I was in elementary school. I kept a $20 bill in my wallet for one full year. So for <laughs> 365 days, I kept a $20 bill and did not touch that $20 bill at all. Mm-hmm. But those type of principles, was the, they helped me to develop to who I am and knowing how to be responsible financially and be able to make, make investments. So in terms of that, you know, when you, you can have your, your child do things around the house or things outside, cut the grass, and then pay them. And when you pay them, teach them, you know, look, we're, we're going we're gonna to save this money, 
and we're going to, you know, once you once you reach a certain level or once you make, say, for instance, $35, once you reach $35, then we're going to go and we're going to invest in X or Y. You know, we're going to we're going to go and do these things because you want to teach them from a young age to be able to work for their money and then to be able to save it because that's one thing that we don't necessarily be – we actually don't – we actually aren't taught that hardly ever, which is knowing how to save our money, to not move off of instinct and go purchase the first thing we see. So that's mm-hmm. a principle I think that should be taught um, to children, and it can also be applicable to, um, like, them going to the store. You know, when you bring, when you bring them to the, to the store with the money that they earn, you go over, okay, well, you have $2, or you have $5. This, this is what you're going to do. You're going to save $2, and you're going to get this, and you're not going to spend that $2, this, the, the rest of it, until, until you work, and then you earn more money, and then you can spend that $2. Mm-hmm. You know? So it, there's various principles that are very, very basic, very rudimentary, but they will go a very, very long way. Um, in the future. So, yeah, you know, teach them about, you know, about, uh, you know, and that, that also goes along with being able to um, make payments on time and overtime because okay. we have to, and I can even say this, when I was younger, I would even my mother, you know, uh, you know, because our parents, you know, they, they had their own struggles, but my mother she would sometimes ask me for money when I was, when, when she needed something, <laughs> you know, when she needed something, when I was younger, she's like, you know, Hey, you know, can, can I borrow such and such? Um, I'll pay you back. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. like if she needed it right then and there, she would ask me for money when I was in middle mm-hmm. school and I would give it to her and she would pay me back, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's, it's, it's about teaching them about putting the money in, not just giving it to them, but having them work for it. And once they work for it, then teach them how to invest and how, how to be able to, to leverage the money that they make. And then when they get older, that will all already be instilled in their minds so they won't make the same mistakes that many of us made when we were, you know, 18, 19, 20 years old. So there are yeah. various principles that we can practice with them, when, you know, when they're much younger. And I guarantee they will always, either it will be on a, on a subconscious level or on a conscious level, but regardless, it's going to still be in their mind. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah, and well, um, brother, I would also yeah, yes, please, ma'am. go ahead. Yes, ma'am, and um, and I would also like to add that for those um, you know, who would like to you know, learn more about credit and, and and improving your uh your credit and also building your your finances, you can actually go to my website www.credithealing.org, yes, and you can get my free ebook. You know, as soon as you go on there, it's going to pop up. You can read, read my ebook, um, Check it out. If you have any questions, you can contact me anytime, which is, I'll get that a little later on. But, yes, you can, you can get my information, um, free ebook, learn more about improving your finances and, and building your credit by going to my website, www.creditheading.org. Perfect. And we'll make sure that we include that in the show notes so that people will be able to have – access to that or are you did you want to also give your social media handling yes ma'am so you can actually find me on youtube as well you can look at my youtube videos at youtube.com forward slash c forward slash credit healing and you can also find me on facebook at credit healing you can just type in credit healing and, and it'll pop up and you can yeah. also find me on instagram and you can just type in credit healing. I don't remember the, the, the full uh, handle on um, Instagram, but if you go and you type in credit healing, LLC, you'll be able to find me there as well. And for Perfect. those of you who would like to tag me, you can actually contact me at credit healing at gmail.com. Again, that's credit healing at gmail.com. And you can call me if you would like to speak to me personally, learn more about you know, how you can improve your credit, or if you would just like to discuss anything with me, um, regarding you know finances or credit, you can call me at two two five seven three three six four two nine. Perfect. And again, we'll make sure that we have all of that in the show notes so that you'll be able to access that right away as uh, as, as soon as you listen to the show. 
My brother, yeah. thank you so very much for thank, thank coming you as well, on my and sister. sharing all that. You're very welcome. I, I look forward to all the questions that are sure to come from today's yes, talk. Uh, because, you know, I look people, forward to answering yeah, yeah. We, so the, you know what that means. We, we would have to have a, a Q&A session where we would have you back on. I'm just saying. I, I, but... I would love it. I would, I would definitely <laughs> love it. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of the Raising Black Millionaires radio show on Verkay.com Radio and iHeartRadio Worldwide. Don't forget to click at the top of our show page where you're streaming this episode or hop on over to RaisingBlackMillionaires.com to get your free copy of the five can't-miss steps parents must follow in Raising Black Millionaires. Easy-to-use strategies for the everyday working parent. And be sure to leave a comment using the hashtag RaisingBlackMillionaires to let us know what you think. Be sure to share the show with your friends and family and give us a five-star rating. Until next week, peace.